Good morning, everybody. My name is John Motley, and uh, we're going to do some worship together today. Uh, would you uh, Would you guys pray with me real quick as we get started? <laughs> Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this opportunity to to just enjoy you, to come together, to sing to you, and just lift your name high with our voices. God, I pray as we just prepare our hearts to receive your word, that you would speak to us, that you would uh, give us hearts to worship you, and that, Lord, um, Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is John Motley, and uh, I'm here to do some worship with you guys before we uh, open up the Word together. Would you guys please uh, take a moment and bow your heads and your hearts and pray with me? <laughs> Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this opportunity to sing to you. God, I just pray wherever we are at right now, Lord, that you would just touch our hearts, touch our minds, and uh, help us just to sing to you with all of our hearts. May these not just be songs that we sing to you, just because some guy is singing them, May this not be something we just watch somebody else do, but may this be the, something that we engage in, something that we all do together as your people, singing to you, Jesus. So go before us now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You're welcome to sing along even in your homes as you sing along with me. This song's called Your Love Never Fails.
Jesus, we do thank you for that amazing love that you have for every single person, every single person on this earth, much less those of us who are joining in right now. Father, I pray that you would give us us that better understanding of your love and what you've done for us, that amazing grace that you have for us, and that we would understand that, understand this amazing grace just a little bit better as we open up your word together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi, everyone. My name is Miss Jen, and I am super excited to continue learning about David with you. But just before we begin, make sure you have a couple of things, something to write with, your class notes and your Bibles, so we can navigate through them together. Um, if you need to press pause to go get those things, that's okay. Um, anytime that you um, need any extra time in looking through the Bible and finding the pages, you can always press pause. That's okay. So before we begin... Let's get into prayer. Um, thank you, Lord, for everything you are to us, God, and just thank you for keeping us healthy and safe. Help us, Lord, to always uh, be grateful to you, Lord. Um, we have so many things to be grateful to you for, and we just help. We just pray that you help us to remember those things and lift up the praises that you so deserve, Lord. Help us to be excited for your word, be excited to share your word, Lord, and um, just help us as we're learning together, my God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, guys, so we've learned so much about David. He was chosen by God to be the king of Israel after Saul. He was brave, strong, and courageous. The Bible tells us that he was a man after God's own heart, but he was still a sinner. David fell into sin with Bathsheba and ended up breaking God's commandments. But when Nathan the prophet pointed out David's sin, David repented and begged God for forgiveness and mercy. We looked at David's plea in Psalm 51 and God forgave David. So although he was forgiven, David still faced consequences for his sin. God warned him that he'd had trouble in his family. This came true when David's son Absalom murdered his own brother and then tried to take the kingdom away from David. Did Absalom succeed? What happened to him in battle? If you guys remember, he Absalom lost the battle against David and he was killed by David's men as he hung by his hair from a tree. So Absalom faced consequences for his sin too, but he did not show a heart of repentance toward God or others as his father did. So David grieved for his son Absalom and God brought David back to Jerusalem to rule. So in addition to being a shepherd, warrior, musician, and king, David was one of many writers of the psalms um what kind of do you do you know what kind of book the book of psalms is what kind of book is it it's a book of poetry psalms is a book of prayers and hymns meant to draw our attention to our mighty god the psalms teach us how to worship god in our words the Psalms were a hymn book for the Hebrew people, and they used them as songs of praise. Some worship songs today are based on Psalms too. Did you know that the book of Psalms contains the longest and the shortest chapters in the Bible? Does anyone know which ones they are? So if you've ever read Psalm 119, it is the longest. And Psalm 117 is the shortest. Psalm 119 is the longest chapter in the Bible. Can anyone guess how many verses it has? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Um, it has 176 verses. Psalm 119 is all about God's word. Now let's turn to Psalm 117. It's the shortest Bible, uh, shortest chapter in the Bible. Psalm 117. 
Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Laud him, all you peoples, for his merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. So this psalm is an example of one of three types that we will look at today. So psalms of praise, psalms of lament, and psalms of thanksgiving. Which of these three do you think this Psalm 117 is? It says it right there. It's a psalm of praise. It's definitely a psalm of praise, a psalm designed to worship the Lord. What two attributes or qualities of God are mentioned in verse 2? Look on verse 2. What, what speaks to his character, his merciful kindness right he has a steadfast love and he is faithful so we can use this psalm to offer more praises to god what two attributes should we use um we could we could praise him for his mercy his kindness right um it's easy to praise God using the Psalms. Let's look at another example of a Psalm of praise. Turn to the very last chapter in the book of Psalms. Do you know what the very last chapter in the book of Psalms is? It's Psalm 150. So let's read one through six together. Let all things praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So what would you say this writer is trying to do and trying to get us to do? Praise the Lord. Where does the writer tell us to praise God in verse 1? Where? In his sanctuary, right? It says to praise God in his sanctuary and praise him in, in his mighty heavens. God is praised, is to be praised everywhere in heaven and on earth. Why is God to be praised? He's to be praised for his mighty deeds and his excellent greatness. We can praise God for his mighty deeds, meaning what he's done for us, and for his excellent greatness. Who he is. How was God praised in this psalm? What instruments are listed? The trumpet, the lute, harp, tambourine, dance, strings, pipes, and cymbals. That's a long list. How many of you are learning to play an instrument? Cool. You can praise the Lord on your instrument. We can also praise God by singing. Remember, the Psalms were the hymn book of the Israelites and were sung to, um, and were sung as praises to God. And we still sing them today. We can worship and praise God through music, singing, and prayer. At the very end of the Psalm, who does it say should praise the Lord? Let everything that has breath Praise the Lord, right? That means you and me. If we're breathing, we should praise the Lord. He alone is worthy of our praise. Let's look at our class notes. Number one, Psalm of blank is worshiping God in music and song. Psalm of praise, P-R-A-I-S-E, right? 
So there are many psalms that give praise to God. The next type of psalm is of lament. A lament means to cry out and ask why. Many writers of the psalms were in trouble and cried out to God. Did you know that David wrote a psalm during the trouble with Absalom? Turn um, your Bibles to chapter Psalm chapter 3. So we're going from the end to almost the beginning. So Psalm chapter 3. You can press pause if you need time to find it. Look at the ner the note um, before verse 1. What does that say? The Lord helps his troubled people. A psalm of David when he fled from Absalom, his son. So, um, David was forced to flee from Jerusalem with his family and his trusted guards. This was a scary time. I'll read verses 1 through 8. Lord, how they have increased who trouble me. Many are they who rise up against me. Many are they who say of me, there is no help for him in God. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory and the one who lifts up my head. I cry to the Lord with my voice, and he heard me from his holy hill, Selah. I lay down and slept. I awoke, for the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of tens of thousands of people who have set themselves against me all around. Arise, O Lord. I think I went a little, oh no. Arise, O Lord. Save me, O my God, for you have struck all my enemies on the cheekbone. You have broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongs to you, belongs to the Lord. Your blessing is upon your people. Selah. So who was rising up against David in verse 1? What does it say? Your, your Bible might say foes. So his enemies... Um, were rising up against him. Foes is another word for enemies. Uh, David had his own son Absalom trying to kill him and take over the throne and many others joined Absalom against David. So David had a lot of enemies trying to get to him. So what did David ask God to do for him in verse 7? He was asking God, save me, save him. So what did David say belongs to the Lord in verse 8? What belongs to the Lord? Right. Good job. Salvation. David understood that God was his only hope in times of trouble. This is an important lesson for us. Will we have times of trouble too? Absolutely, yes. Who should we turn to for help? Our friends. Oh, we should turn to God. That's right. When we're in trouble, God is the one we should turn to. Let's look at another example of a psalm of lament. So in Psalm 43, 1 through 5. Vindicate me, O God. Wait, before I start there, let me go back to the little subtitle. So Psalm 43, prayer to God in time of trouble. Vindicate me, O God, and plead my cause against an ungodly nation. O oh, deliver me from the deceitful and unjust man, for you are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? O oh, send out your light and your truth. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy hill and to your tabernacle. 
Then I will go to the altar of God, to God my exceeding joy, and on the harp I will praise you, O God, my God. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. So um, how many questions do you see in verses 1 through 5? Mm. So there are four questions. Good job. There are two in verse 2 and there's two in verse 5. What is the first one? What's the first question? First one um, is, why have you rejected me? And the second question in verse 2, why do I go about mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? What are the the two why questions in verse 5? Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you in turmoil within me? These questions show that the writer felt like God had rejected him. He felt alone. He was mourning or sad because he felt crushed and burdened by the enemy. But the writer hadn't given up on God. What did he ask for? What did he ask God to send? Look in verse 3. Oh, send out your light and your truth to lead him. Um, what did God, what did he call God in verse 4? To God, my exceeding joy. The answer to his questions is at the end of verse 5. What does he need to have in God? Look at the end of verse 5. What does he need to have? Hope in God. Yes, the writer felt bad and was asking God why. He wrote this psalm of lament when he wondered where God was. Yet, he knew that God was there all along. He said he would go to the altar of God, his exceeding joy, and would praise God. He knew that his only hope and salvation was in God. We can all learn from this. We don't always feel like praying or worshiping when we're scared or sad or lonely. But God knows our hearts. He knows we may be sad sometimes and he wants us to come to him in prayer like the writer of Psalm 43 did. There is only one place to find joy again and that is in God. Number two in your class notes Psalm of blank is crying out to God. Psalm of lament, right? L-A-M-E-N-T. So now we'll look into the third kind of psalm. Um, please turn with me to Psalm 136, verses 1 through 3. So um, 136, 1 through 3. Psalm 136. Thanksgiving to God for his enduring mercy. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his mercy endures forever. So what type of psalm do you think this might be? What was the writer doing when he wrote this psalm? He was definitely thanking God. That's right. It was written to give God thanks. It's a psalm of thanksgiving. Why is the writer giving thanks to God? What attributes, what attribute of God endures forever? His steadfast love. Yes, God's steadfast love endures forever. This is the same attribute we read being praised in Psalm 117. In the rest of the psalm, the writer thanks God for his creation and his deliverance over enemies in the past. 
he remembered the great things God had done. God had provided for them. And for all these things, the writer was giving thanks to God. So God is reminding us through this psalm that we too should remember the great things that he's done for us. When we think this way, remembering the blessings of the past, it's easy to have a grateful heart and give God thanks. He blesses us every day, often in ways that we don't even realize. So um, share something you're grateful to God for with the person next to you. You can press pause and, and let them know. We have so many things. Um, so number three in your class notes is the Psalm of Thanksgiving. Um, so you can fill in the blank, Thanksgiving, T-H-A-N-K-S-G-I-V-I-N-G. -I -I so the Psalm of Thanksgiving is giving thanks to God for who he is and what he's done. So we've covered three types of Psalms, but there are more. While God is the ultimate author of the Psalms, he inspired different men to write them over hundreds of years. Some Psalms have a little inscription or note that tells us who wrote it, what event was happening or what kind of song it was or what tune it was, it, it, what tune to use. So from these notes in the Psalms, how many writers do you think we know about? We'll use our class notes to find the answer. Let's do number four together. Everyone turn to Psalm 18. Let's read the note for that psalm, the text right before verse one. So Psalm 18, God the sovereign savior, to the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spoke to the Lord the words of this song on the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. That's one of my favorite verses, guys. So um, who wrote this psalm? Number four on your class notes is who wrote this psalm? Who do you guys, what does it say there? A psalm of who? David. King David wrote at least 73 of 150 psalms. We've already looked at two others by him, Psalm 51 and Psalm 3. When did he write this psalm? Let's look in the inscription. He wrote it when the Lord rescued him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. This note mentions the choir master, so it was meant to be sung for worship. It tells us the author David and the event in his life that led to this writing. Now, if you feel ambitious, why don't you and your parents pause the video and look up the rest of the Psalms together, writing the names of the men who wrote them on your class notes. So on your class notes, you have um, the Psalms, different Psalm, you have Psalm 18, 45, 80, 88, 89, 90, and 122, I think it says. Um, so you can look them up, look up who wrote them. Okay, so including David, how many authors did you find? There should be seven. Sometimes several writers work together, as we saw in Psalm 88 with the sons of Korah and Heman. We don't have the names of all the writers God inspired to compose these songs, but we know these seven. This collection of songs and prayers is the largest book in the Bible. So we know praise and worship are important to God. It should be important to us too. So for number five in your class notes, um, 45, Psalm 45 was written by the sons of Korah, K-O-R-A-H. Psalm 80 was written by Asaph, A-S-A-P-H. 
number um, seven, Psalm 88 was written by Heman um, and sons of Korah. Eight, number eight, Psalm 89 was written by Ethan. Uh, number nine, Psalm 90 was written by Moses. Um, and Psalm 127 was written by Solomon. So we started our lesson by looking at psalms of praise, which were used to worship God in music and song. When you want to praise God and aren't sure what to say, just find one of the praises uh, in psalms and read it out loud to God. The psalms will help you worship God. Then we read uh, psalms of lament where the writers were crying out to God and asking why things were happening. They understood that God was the one to turn to in times of trouble and sadness. When you feel scared or sad, you can pray a psalm of lament to God and ask him for help. Then we looked at reasons we can thank God for who he is and the things he has done. You can thank God for the prayers he has answered or the ways he has blessed you. You can share those things with others to give glory to God. So um, let's close in prayer. Um, Father God, we thank you for this day and this lesson, and we pray that it brings us closer to you, Lord, and to find new ways to communicate to you just and, and praise you the way that you deserve to be praised, Lord. Let our hearts always be after your own, Lord, and lead us um, down your path, the path, your path of righteousness for your namesake. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Bye, guys. Have a great week.